A symbol of terror and an icon of a horrific regime, the MP40 is the definitive German submachine gun of World War II. Developed in the infancy of submachine gun design, this German wartime relic gained notoriety for its widespread use by the German armed forces during their reign of terror over Europe in the 1940s, found in the hands of hundreds of thousands of Wehrmacht soldiers. Designed for mass production, the steel-framed MP40 was produced over a million times over the course of the war, becoming famed to the Germans for its reliability and ease of use, along with being notorious to the Allies as a common sight in their enemy's hands on the battlefield. Weighing in at just under 9 pounds, and with a length of 24.8 inches with the stock folded, this wartime submachine gun fires the 9x19mm Parabellum cartridge out of 32 round box magazines. Firing these pistol grade rounds at 500 to 550 rounds per minute, the MP40 is effective at up to 200 meters, with its rounds traveling at 400 meters per second. World War I was an entirely new type of warfare, with many new brutal weapons of war being tested for the first time. Gas attacks, armoured land ships, fighter planes, all were experimented with during the war, but one invention would begin to gain prominence at the tail end of the conflict. Entering service for the German Empire in 1918, just a few months before the armistice ended hostilities, was the Bergmann MP18 a new kind of pistol cartridge firing, fully automatic weapon, with the other powers of the war developing similar weapons, such as the Italian Beretta Model 1918 and American Annihilator, all designed to break the seemingly never-ending stalemate and clear trenches much more effectively. This new type of weapon became incredibly effective, their size, maneuverability, magazine capacity and rate of fire, giving them a dramatic advantage in close combat against the bolt-action rifles most soldiers carried, and although they came too late to make any real impact on the war, the designs had mechanical and practical merit. These production weapons were based on earlier attempts at making a fully automatic pistol cartridge firing weapon. The Germans, for instance, attempting to convert stock-equipped Luger and Mauser C96 handguns from semi to fully automatic in the early years of the war, but these were deemed unsuitable due to their high recoil and inaccurate automatic fire. Following the conflict's end, John Thompson, creator of the Annihilator, coined the term for this new class of weapon, the submachine gun, and the Germans, along with many other nations, began investing heavily in their development. In the early 1920s, one German firearms designer, Heinrich Vollmer, had been working extensively on developing submachine guns, producing a number of models based heavily on the Bergmann MP18. After producing a number of these weapons, one caught the eye of the German Reichswehr, the armed forces of the short-lived Weimar Republic, that being his VMP 1925 design, and they began testing it, having to do so secretly as the 1919 Treaty of Versailles prohibited the defeated Germany from having submachine guns in service. Ultimately, the Reichswehr approved of the design, beating out competing designs from the likes of Hugo Schmeisser, who designed the MP18 and would go on to design the STG-44, and the Reichswehr began secretly funding Vollmer's development of his submachine gun prototypes, resulting in the VMP 1928 and 1930 designs. But in 1930, the Reichswehr stopped funding the Volmer designs, and the money he was making from selling small numbers of his submachine gun wasn't viable, forcing him to sell the rights to his weapons to German weapons manufacturer Irma Werke in 1931, who began commercially producing his VMP 1930 design as the Irma Maschinenpistol, or EMP, later designated the MP34. Volmer would continue to produce submachine gun designs at Irma into the 1930s, while the company became famous for the EMP, selling the weapon to many nations across the globe, and the success would catch the eye of the HWA, or German Ordnance Department, under the new regime brought about by Adolf Hitler. Hitler was preparing Germany for war, putting into action his four-year plan to get German industries ready for war production, and the Ordnance Department was looking for a new submachine gun to be mass-produced for the coming conflict. Initially, the MP36 design was put forth, but was quickly redesigned and simplified by Vollmer, resulting in the MP38 design, 
which itself was then redesigned and simplified to ease manufacturing times and costs, resulting in the MP, or Machinen Pistol 40. Made from stamped steel and using Volmer's patented telescoping main operating spring, the weapon was put into mass production in 1940, just a year into the Second World War, with over a million produced by the time production ended in 1945. The standard German infantryman in World War II was equipped with either the venerable Kar 98K bolt-action rifle or an MP40 submachine gun, but this would soon change based on the combat situations the Germans found themselves in, particularly with the Soviets. In confrontations with Soviet soldiers at dense urban locations such as Stalingrad and Berlin, the Soviets were almost entirely equipped with the incredibly high rate of fire of the PPSH-41. The Germans in turn, finding themselves woefully outgunned by the sheer volume of fire dispensed by their Russian adversaries, forcing the Germans to adopt a similar strategy, sometimes solely equipping entire platoons with just submachine guns by the war's end. Though by 1943, the Germans sought to replace both the Kar 98K and MP40 as standard issue with the revolutionary STG-44, the world's first true mass-produced assault rifle, but this would never fully materialize, due to the man and material shortages Germany was experiencing as the conflict neared its end. The weapon would also gain the nickname of the Schmeisser, in reference to weapons designer Hugo Schmeisser, though he had little to do with the weapon's development and design. The Germans would attempt to update the MP40 twice over the course of the war, resulting in two known variants of the design, the MP40-1 and the MP41. The MP40-1 was designed for special operation troops on the Eastern Front, modified to have a dual magazine holder to theoretically increase the ammunition capacity to 64 rounds in order to compensate for the larger drum magazines the Soviet PPSH-41 used, but it proved unsuccessful due to weight and reliability issues. The MP-41 was essentially an MP-40 upper receiver on top of an MP-18 lower receiver, and saw limited use with SS and police units in Germany. The MP-40 was also studied extensively by the Allies to improve their own submachine guns, the Americans using the weapon and the English Sten to develop their M3 grease gun, along with the Soviets borrowing the folding stock design used on the MP-40 to design their own for the PPS-43, and later the folding stock variants of the AK-47. By the time the war ended, the MP-40's distinctive profile was etched firmly into the minds of the world as a symbol of the regime that had terrorized the world for six years. As ubiquitous for the Germans as the Thompson and Sten were for the Americans and the British, the MP-40 was a brilliant submachine gun, though its reputation would be forever tainted by its intrinsic association with one of the most horrific periods and individuals in human history. Since World War II, the MP-40 has found limited use, but models of the iconic submachine gun have found their way all across the globe, some seeing action in the jungles of Vietnam and others in the deserts of the Middle East. Many MP-40s would find their way to the United States in the aftermath of World War II, American soldiers shipping captured German weapons home as trophies during the Allied occupation of the defeated nation but this would be largely stopped relatively quickly. The iconic German wartime submachine gun, the MP40, is the definitive Axis weapon, and an infamous symbol of Hitler's destructive regime. Thank you so very much for watching these videos. Please like and subscribe, and comment below what you'd like to see me cover next.